Okay, so we are ready. Um, uh, hello everyone and welcome to ADOC's uh, Ask the Experts webinar. Uh, my name is Ariella Shoham, I'm VP Marketing at ADOC and I'm super excited to be here at the Brussels University Hospital with uh, Professor Johan de May, who is the head of the radiology department. Hello, Professor de May. And uh, with Dr. Hans Nivel, who is the senior radiologist. Uh, hello. Um, we are running uh, this live webinar uh, that is actually going to, uh, to be the first in a series uh, that we are going to run uh, where we uh, go out into the field and meet the users of, uh, of ADOC solution to talk about the actual value that they see from using AI. Um, this, is a, this will be recorded. We will share the link with everyone following uh, the webinar. Uh, you are all muted, uh, but there is a, a QA uh, option uh, within the interface of Zoom, and so feel free to submit your questions. We will be running for about 30 minutes uh, with the, both the professor and the doctor, uh, and then uh, we will open uh, for some questions in the last 15 minutes of the hour. Uh, in addition to uh, the three of us here uh, in Brussels, we have uh, our CEO, Elad Valach, uh, who, is, uh, who is in uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, hi, Elad. Uh, you can speak now if we can hear you. Hi, Riala. Thank you. Uh, and so, uh, without uh, further ado, I'll actually let uh, Elad uh, uh, jump in and uh, say a few words about ADOC before we go into the webinar. Uh, for sure. Thank you, Ariella. And I want to start by um, sharing my thanks with both Professor DeMay and uh, Dr. Nibor about uh, their willingness to speak with, the, with us in the radiology community about AI in practice. I think it's an, an exciting new field and how you implement it in practice, how it impacts the clinical care is really something that, uh, that needs to be investigated uh, across the whole community. Uh, so thank you for your time today. In short, we're in ADOC, a leading provider of artificial intelligence solutions for radiology departments. Uh, we offer a suite of tools uh, to help radiology departments optimize their workflow uh, especially for critical care, by detecting critical findings in CT exams across the whole body, and then helping flag patients where the AI has identified a critical finding to help, uh, to help feed those patients in, uh, in a timely manner, optimize the workflow, and overall improve uh, quality of care. Uh, the solution is already FDA and uh, CE cleared, we're now installed in more than 60 medical centers worldwide, uh, mostly across the US and Europe. Just last year, we've analyzed more than 1 million patients uh, and uh, hopefully helped them get better, uh, more higher quality treatment. And uh, our data is stacking up. We have already seven peer reviewed publications, uh, and which we're happy to share uh, with, uh, with the community about both the accuracy and the solution, uh, of the solution as well as the outcomes and potential benefits. Um, and I wanna pass the baton back to, to you, Ariella, at the uh, University of Brussels. I think that, uh, that would be the uh, most interesting part of today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you a lot. Okay, so I'm excited again to be here uh, and I'm going to uh, start with you. Uh, Professor DeMay, tell us a bit, first of all, tell us about you and your history. You were telling me some interesting things before, and then tell us a bit about uh, the, the University of Brussels. So over to you. Okay, so maybe uh, yeah, just for me, I started radiology about 30 years ago, two years ago as, uh, as resident. Um, and at that moment, I was already interested in computers and everything around it. I think like all radiologists were uh, eager to work with computers. Uh, and after one year of training, uh, I started to take uh, out pictures from the CT scan and I carried them to the other side of Brussels, the, the Department uh, of Engineering of our university. And I, um, I asked those engineers, can you do something with those images? I would like to see something more than just the image itself. So you were actually carrying the film? Uh, I was carrying the film to, to <laughs> them. They, they, they scanned it in and then they, yeah, they made a, a digital image of it. So uh, this was starting like this. And then uh, after a while, I, I started to take the digital images from the CT scan itself on, on big floppies. Um, and they started to work on it. And uh, 
uh, after one year, they had some results and they could measure the surface of the ventricle of, uh, of the brain. Uh, and it took them about 15 minutes to process just one image. And then I got the surface of the ventricle. So this was at that time really special. Uh, and uh, it took about, it took more than 30 years to, to come to this solution where we get really help from, from the computer. Uh, the last 10 years, we got a lot of quantitative data but uh, quantitative data then still you need as radiologists to point out, I want to see the volume of that, I want to see that. Uh, but now I think it's going really fast that you see that AI is coming into our daily clinical work. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that, that it comes. Um, because if you look at our department, uh, we have uh, about 40 radiologists, full time equivalents. We're looking at about 150 million images a year. So it means that we only get one second to look at each image, so which is acceptable, but it's, it's really low. Um, and if you look at the, the evolution in radiology, uh, each year, with, yeah, each two years, we're doubling in amount of, of images. So in two years, it, we will have one half a second, and then four years, we will have only 0.25 seconds. So I think in six to eight years, it stops for us as radiologists. So we need help and help is coming now, uh, it's late. I would have expected it 10 years ago, but okay, <laughs> now it's, it's coming in and I'm, I'm glad it's coming in because we really need it. If we want to still have some time to talk with colleagues and to talk with other uh, clinicians in the hospital, and if you want to talk with the patients. So uh, at this moment, we're getting, yeah, we're putting all our time looking at those images and we're losing time as, as a real medical doctor to talk about treatment and to talk with other colleagues. So I hope that evolution will go on and I'm sure it will go on and it's going fast and, and we will become again real medical doctors as radiologists to, to talk about patient treatment and only not only looking at images and looking for black and, and white spots on the images. And we were talking about this also before, right? I think that um, I find that when I speak to some radiologists, they seem to fear this, right? But when we were talking about this, you were very passionate about actually thinking, knowing that this has value, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you, are show, you, are, you, you are doing this in your department, you are using various AI tools, we'll soon talk about ours, but yeah, yeah. you have this thought process of how this will, yeah, will help. A lot of radiologists, uh, are, yeah, they're afraid that the computer will replace them. Uh, I'm thinking in the other way, if we will not have the help of the computer, in six to eight years, we will be buried under the amount of data which we can, cannot handle anymore. And, and as radiologists, we will lose the track. So in my opinion, the only way to go forward is to get this AI, to get this computer help, to be able as radiologists to, to oversee all the data, to communicate about all those data to the other doctors, and to have, a, again, an interaction where we have an added value uh, and not only being the, the ones who are looking at the images and just making fast reports. No, we need again that added value. And the only way we can get it is by having computer help to help us how to yeah, cope with all those data. And in my opinion, computer in, in medical uh, yeah, treatment will, will have a more important place in the next year. So in my opinion, robot surgery uh, is coming up and, and robots will be to be better surgeons in 10, 20 years than the surgeons that we have today. If you want to attach one vessel to another, I think a robot will be better to do this in a few years than at this moment the best surgeons are doing it. So in my opinion, robots will take over work from medical doctors, not only in radiology, in all kinds of disciplines. And at the end, and this is maybe in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, I don't know if you look at Star Trek, the computer, will get the leads in, in diagnosis, in treatments. And in my opinion, radiologist is then best placed as yeah, the one who has the knowledge from all those digital things to be the doctor who is doing diagnosis and treatment. So in my opinion, radiologist will be the, the last one standing near the patients. And it's not the other ones who will standing near the patient and then use the computers. No, we're using those computers now already, and we're the experts, so we should take the leads in going further with this. Exactly, because yeah. radiologists are the real, the real technical 
the real techie doctors, right? So yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> I think it's, it's, okay. it's, it's who's going to lead us to the future. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Professor Deme. Uh, so now to you, uh, Dr. Nirbo, who, who's actually uh, working with the team. Uh, so maybe you can tell us a bit about uh, what you're doing with ADOC, uh, who, who is using it. Uh, uh, maybe tell us a bit about the, uh, the process of work with our solution. So we use the two practices of ADOC uh, available right now. It's uh, uh, brain hemorrhage detection and cerebral spine fracture detection. So uh, this um, is really implemented uh, starting at the emergency ward CT scan. Uh, nowadays, we have all data from the other scanners are also uh, analyzed by the ADOC software. So it started in emergency and now you're emergency. expanding to, okay. Mm -hmm. because of course, we, we detect the first uh, hemorrhages there. That's what you, of course, expect. Yeah. Of course, there are people coming also ambulant uh, to the CT scan. There are people uh, coming for a second uh, uh, control scan uh, who has to be re evaluated too. So there might be a secondary hemorrhage, and you can find them also during daily routine. So it's not only emergency, of course. Um, so, how it's implemented, uh, we want to have a direct link uh, from the console, so from the modality to, uh, to ADOC. Because uh, we don't want to go over the packs, because it's an extra step. You have to make short lines to have quick results. So that means we uh, go from our source, to the CT scanner. Fin slides are going to the ADOC uh, server. ADOC server sends them to the cloud. Uh, they are analyzed and get a report back to the ADOC server, and the ADOC server connects it uh, in the packs to the right exam. Mm -hmm. So that's how it goes. Uh, that takes about five minutes, uh, mm -hmm. something like that. I don't have the exact numbers here now, but uh, that means it's really quick. Of course, when we are in an emergency ward situation, uh, there are dedicated radiologists during the day that might be a resident, that might be a senior radiologist uh, who is really following the patient so they know when uh, there's a, uh, a brain a CT scan is coming in and they follow it directly. So. It's sometimes a little bit like a... Uh, who comes first? Yeah, who comes first with the uh, results. <laughs> yes, with the results. But, yeah. but, but, but of close. course, uh, <laughs> when the results are there, you have a first reader, and that's you, okay, there is some positive finding. Uh, of course, when you have the report ready, and you see that uh, the, uh, the positive finding is coming in, you have a second uh, read to look, okay, do we... Uh, do have a comparison and we, do we agree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here, so how do we see this? Uh, the widget uh, is in the left corner of our screen. Um, and when there's a positive finding, the widget will give a small alert showing the name. And when you put a, you click on it, you will see the image and uh, the positive images with uh, other hemorrhoids or uh, the fracture. In this case, we'll see uh, a small hemorrhage. Uh, we can click on the widget where there's the access number. That's the only thing which is connected. So we can open it with the uh, access number. Or uh, most often we are still busy with reports. So uh, the images, these images are showing up in our extra packs. And we can uh, link them directly uh, to the right spots and make the comparison of our own ports. And do you feel that uh, the users are, it's, it's a seamless experience or did they have to learn something new? How, what, was the, what was the feeling? I, I think they are paying, especially the residents paying more and more attention to the widget and uh, the images coming in. In the beginning, of course, uh, you have to get used to this uh, <laughs> that you get some extra information, uh, but more and more they're paying attention uh, to it. Um, and it helps to them to make uh, the decision. Of course, um, there are also, and we have to be honest, there are also false positive findings. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you have to be uh, sure that it's not a hemorrhage, and you do this second uh, reading, and you have to check it again. So that makes it a real quality assurance that we really didn't miss something. Right, right, right. So if we talk about quality, and, and I'm going to ask you to maybe share, and this is, this is the mm -hmm. webinar, uh, discussion and, 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 it, and it's, it's exciting to see that you find value in the quality. Yeah. Maybe Professor Demay wants to say something before we go into the example. Yeah, no, I, I think often during night we have younger residents uh, doing the part and, and what we see now at ADOC is showing them something on the, on, the, on the screen and says, okay, you have to look at this 
maybe this is uh, something which is wrong in the patient. And, and I think most of the time they see it, and then it's okay, we just make the report. Now you see that they get more signs and they are paying their attention to that sign. And they get, yeah, they start thinking about this, is this pathology or not? Uh, so in my opinion, uh, it's good for training. You, you make the uh, residents look at all the things which seem to be abnormal. Uh, often it's bleeding, sometimes it's not. But then the next step is to call the supervisor. How should we go on with this? Is this really bleeding or is this something else? So at that moment, the supervisor comes in and he looks at it and says, okay, this is a bleeding, well done. Or no, it's not a bleeding, it's an artifact. You should not look at it and, and leave it like this. So in my opinion, at the end, training is becoming much better. So the re residents are trained to see more things. In my opinion, quality is becoming better because the missed things or some missed things are paid to their attention immediately. On the other side, during the change progress, what we see now is that the resident, the, the resident is calling the supervisor and supervisor gets more work. <laughs> In my opinion, okay, this is just a change moment. Uh, we will train faster our residents, they will be better trained and quality will go up. And at the end, only quality will go up and time from the supervisor will go down again. Time for the resident will go down again. And, and this is the, the only purpose we have, a higher quality without having a time penalty for, for nobody. During the change moments, I think uh, there is a time penalty for the, for the supervisor, but okay, as head of the department, it's a little bit annoying to explain this to the supervisors, but <laughs> okay, they, they have to cope with it. And, and, in, and at the end, everybody will have a benefit. Right, I understand yeah. that in the end, it's, it's something that is going to benefit. And like you said, even now, right? Yeah. So already you can see the quality, even now, already quality you can is see going the improvement. Up. And I think it's, it's, it's a really good thing that as university hospital, we start now doing those things. If we don't take the train now, we'll have to take it in one, two, three years. And uh, the change will be bigger. So let's start now and let's, let's go on to, to implement this uh, in, in our clinical daily work. And so here, clinical daily work, I'm going to share some examples maybe here for you, Dr. Neopold, to walk us through. These are uh, some examples which we are uh, bouncing to. Uh, so this is a small uh, positive detection uh, after trauma, I, we call it well. And <clears throat> okay, this was, uh, I don't remember anymore if it was already called positive or not, but of course you can imagine when you're not experienced, when you're tired, so it's three o'clock in the morning, you can miss these kind of findings and we have this positive feedback. It can help you to take another look at your images and uh, be sure that there's uh, hemorrhage or not. This was a positive hemorrhage. Here's another nice example of a small subacnodal hemorrhage uh, detected uh, in this positive report. And, you, and this is one, uh, I think this is quite uh, important. It's a hidden location where often, uh, especially younger residents can, um, it's, it's, it's such uh, a dead corner where you often don't look at. Uh, that's uh, the bottom of your ventricles where the hemorrhage is accumulated. Uh, and you see this small hyperdensity, and it's uh, positive here in the report. And really important to, of course, to detect these uh, small hemorrhages. So we were talking also before we started this webinar, right? We were talking about uh, how if we if we look at at at, uh, at AI, I guess in general, maybe specifically about a solution. This is, as we said, it's going to make students, I guess, uh, improve faster. It's it's hopefully going to make radiologists a lot stronger. And I think. Um, I was asking you a bit before, and maybe uh, you can say a few more a few more words about um, uh, what do you what what are the next thoughts of your of, of what you want to do with specifically with this solution, and then we'll talk about the future. But okay, we started yeah. talking a bit about this. Well, for this solution, next thought is to not only do this for the emergency department, but go for the whole department of radiology. And this is something we're implementing now already. We started to implement today another CT scan to send everything from brain and, and cervical spine. So in my opinion, this is next step for us. In the stop of the emergency ward, we go for the, the whole department to, to work together for these kinds of exam. The step afterwards is to go broader and to go to other regions of the body, to other pathology. And, and this is going fast. If you see what's happening now, I think this will come in, in the next years. Mm. Uh, what we also would like to do is, is go back into the past and see um, 
were it that good as we thought, or did we make mistakes? So a, a sort of retrospective study yeah. using, using ADOC. Yeah. I'm sure we made mistakes. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's, it's good to see all those mistakes. We will find them, yeah. like in every center. And, and to learn about these mistakes. And again, to, 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 to make our training from the residents and, and other colleagues better by learning from, from the mistakes. So I think this is a, a double advantage, going back, looking at the mistakes and learning from it, and being able to have a double reader during the night and also learn from how to yeah, work with it and how to go to, to become better as radiologists. So. And I think, I think, uh... Uh, just just to summarize maybe the work that we that we've been doing with you here and I think we were looking at these numbers uh, together um, uh, the future plans like you like you explained are, are both based on the quality and, and also on, on expanding and, and this is just one summary of, of the work that we've been doing with you just over the week uh, I think uh, the audience can see uh, the various uh, numbers specifically for the ED right this is where it's implemented today um, and I, I also think uh, it's exciting at least for us to see the high user engagement I think that it's it's encouraging as you explained that that the users actually do like to to look at it and see what it's what what the what the solution is showing so I think that's that's a step in the right direction yeah, no, I agree completely. I think 69% uh, is not 100. We should go to 100. But, okay, 69 <laughs> we'll is or, or already, yeah, yeah. already okay. So I, I think most of us are really using it, are looking at it, are yeah, they put interest in it. And I think it's it's normal as radiologists. You're, you're yeah. curious, I think. You're I curious see about <laughs> computer development and, and you're, yeah, yeah. you have to go for it. And you were talking before. I'll, I'll just I'll just pull up a slide there because I think uh, this this forward approach of thinking that uh, uh, I guess AI is going to make uh, doctors and radiologists stronger. So this is just a slide from some research that Forrester did, and they're calling this uh, augmented humans, mm -hmm. right? Augmented uh, yeah. uh, doctors, uh, and uh, and maybe you can you you touched upon it before. You were talking about the way. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, surgeons are going to be using robots, but yeah. but specifically we're talking about radiologists. Mm -hmm. Maybe you say this a bit I, more I because it was get, very get again more time to to think about the pathology, uh, to think about how we should go on with this. We get time to to talk to the other colleagues in multidisciplinary meetings, and I think as radiologists we're going to put ourselves again in in, uh, in front and, and being a real medical doctor who has the knowledge of all the images has the knowledge of all the add-ons from AI and then we'll go into discussion with the other clinicians how to treat the patient. And in my opinion this is, is, is the way the radiologists should go. They should decide about the exam and being able to do a perfect technical exam and then they should have time to work with all the data we get to talk and to, to, to become one of the, the key persons in, in the discussion about patient treatment. And I think this is the way the radiologist should go. You should not go to, to see every 0.1 second an image and look at the dots. No, he has to be, become again a medical doctor. What do you feel, Dr. Nirvoriz? Does AI seem to be something that you're going to be comfortable no. working with in the future or? Um, well, I, I think AI will, like uh, Professor May explained, will really change uh, the way we are working with, uh, with our, all our data. And especially in emergency radiology, it will be uh, really uh, an argument that's a uh, uh, product to, to uh, make decisions. So what I also like to say to, to the young residents, uh, you're not uh, image watchers anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, they are for years already. Uh, more and more, I try to, to explain them. You are the consultant of radiology. So that means you need to take the whole package. Uh, and this is just another uh, step further in having more information out of our images and to implement this in the daily routine. So changing, so making the radio, images, right, but, uh, being a consultant, right. I agree, I think that, that brings you a bit out of this dark, yeah, <laughs> darkness out, and more. Out of the dark room and, and being consultant in how to do the exam, how to work with the exam, how to process with the patient, and how to treat the patients. I think we need to see the whole chain. And, and now we're, yeah, because of the, the image loads, we're attracted to, to look at those images. And we should get a little bit more in background from the images. And I think AI will uh, provide the tools to do this, not next year, but it will come in, it will come fast, in my opinion. So if we're talking about predictions, I'm gonna 
pull Elad back in uh, into the into the picture, uh, um, maybe from a vendor perspective, right? It could be interesting to hear what what we think as a vendor uh, from a predictions perspective uh, where we're going in 2019. Elad, uh, I'll let you take this from here. Terrific, thank you, Ariella. Um, and I see we have some interesting questions from the audience uh, that I'm looking forward to address uh, after, say, after this slide. So in short, uh, I wanted to give our perspective about what we're seeing in the market um, from talking to hospitals, from being in the conferences and meeting uh, our partners and um, partners and other vendors. And I think the biggest shift in this year, and I, I'm very excited for this year, is that we're gonna have maturation of AI solutions. And the discussions are gonna be less and less about the specific, uh, I would say, accuracy of AI algorithms and more outcomes that could be gained by utilizing AI. And I think it's the normal maturation of technologies that come into a space and are actively being used in a clinical setting. So I think we're gonna see more research about the outcomes. We're gonna see more users, um, good testimonials hopefully about people that are utilizing AI and use cases about how it can be utilized uh, to maximize effect. So I think this year is gonna be the year that we're gonna see that, that uh, hype starting to become real. Um, second, I think it's a trend that we're all seeing, but uh, would continue to be strong this year there is going to be a consensus about augmentation and using AI as a, as a decision support tool and not as a replacement. That's something that enhances the radiologist, enhances productivity, enhances quality, uh, but doesn't, uh, doesn't take, uh, I would say, anything from him. It's more about making the radiologists uh, better. And the third big aspect is that we see uh, major shifts going on on the regulatory processes side. And two major ones that we're seeing, especially the FDA leading, one of them is about the scalability of artificial intelligence. Uh, we're gonna see a lot more AI solutions becoming broader, more comprehensive, and the FDA is creating new types of processes to be able to uh, consume so many products at the same time. So first of all, it's about scalability and, and implementing a lot of different solutions. The second big change is going to be about continuous monitoring and continuous learning. In artificial intelligence, because of the, on the one hand, because of the black box nature, you sometimes don't know exactly what you get. And if you trained on a specific set, you don't know if it will work across a lot of sites. Uh, on the other hand, you get solutions that can potentially improve over time and become more robust and more accurate uh, the, more, the more you train them. And the FDA is creating regulatory frameworks, especially with the pre-cert program, uh, which some of you might have heard about, that would allow for AI solutions to continuously train and improve. And I would say that a combination of all of this would be uh, the fact that we're gonna see AI becoming a more natural part of standard of care uh, with benefits, I think, both for radiologists and for patients. Thank you, Elad. Um, so I'm just going to, before I, I go into the QA and then just sort of show the last slide, uh, I'll just let both doctor and the professor, maybe you want to say some closing remarks before we jump in. We have one more, one more minute for the half hour. And of course, yeah. we can extend if we need. Yeah, one, one of the questions is why ADOC and why not one of the other companies using AI? I think what, what you'll have to look at if, if you want to use it now in clinical work, um, it has to be easy. You're, you're sending images, getting back images, reporting the, the, the results. It, it has to be in, in your workflow and really easy way to work with. Uh, if it's too complex, nobody will use it. So I think this is the first thing. Um, the other thing is if you're using is it, it, it has to go fast. If as radiologist, the result is only coming after one or two hours, Okay, this can be an added value, but not in the routinely workup and certainly not in the emergency wards. So easy to use and going fast are the two things why we went now for, for ADOC and to use this on the emergency ward. Um, and, and I think 
ADOC as, as both. And then there was also a small question about uh, false positives. Uh, I agree, some are false positives, and I think it's, it's one, you know, or 25%, something like this. Uh, it changes a little bit, but it's, it's one on four, which is, is false positive. Uh, for me, this is not a problem. Uh, if you would have false negatives, this would be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think ADOC is providing the speech, is providing the easy way to work, and is providing some false positives, but nearly no false negatives. So that is why we went for ADOC, and I, I guess there are all other companies also providing those things, but in ADOC we found those three uh, in, an, in a good way. Great okay. to hear. And here there's another question uh, for you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nimble. Do you think AI will be used to organize the workflow or mainly for uh, analyzing the images? Maybe organizing. Well, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I would say organizing, maybe impacting, impacting the workflow. Impacting workflow, yeah? and we, we already discussed it a little bit, but of course at this moment it is mainly analyzing and you get a report and we do a second reading or the first reading of these reports together with the original images. But of course, as uh, President May already told, is that uh, we get more and more and more data, so we have to change our workflow, and it has to help us because there won't be, it's already late, and there won't be another solution. So we have to use AI in our workflow and uh, move on because otherwise we can't cope with all the data we have to evaluate. So, yes, it will finally change our workflow. But of course, first we have to get. Uh, confidence in, in the results we get. Mm -hmm. So we have to get used to it as radiologists that we get these results. And the longer we train these systems, of course, the results will get better. Well, that's the attention of the deep learning systems and the AI systems, and that's what we want. And if you get this confidence, you will change your workflow because you can work faster. Uh, Agreed, um, it's, it's a good there, point. There was another question. Uh, well, there's actually a question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, about yeah, about the legal point of view. Yeah. I think uh, we're working together with all companies: um, Siemens, Philips, uh, GE, uh, Hitachi, Toshiba. We we all we, we have them all, and and I think if if you work together with those companies, those companies have access to your data. So they access your scanner; they can see all the data, even with the names on it. So they have to to cope with this, and they have to be safe on, on working with your data. And this is also from the Belgian point of view accepted. So the companies have to prove that they are safe and that they, they treat your data. For ADOC, we're anonymizing the data. So we're going even a step further than with the, the other bigger vendors from, from machines. So in my opinion, this is not a problem and, and we are legally and ethically covered by uh, the normal workflow. Maybe this one? Should I ask the question? Yeah. All right. So another question is, because um, not everyone can see them, I'm reading them out. Um, do you have any tips for young residents in training and AI? Do we need to learn general radiology and at the same time get to know AI? That's a cool question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, well, I think you still have to train your general radiology. Uh, but as a young radiologist, you have to also learn to cope with the extra information you get from uh, AI systems. So you have to implement this and you have to learn to, uh, first of all, work with these systems, see how it's, um, what is a positive finding, what's a negative finding, uh, what is a false positive, that's mainly uh, the issue in the beginning, but because it gets stronger and stronger, you know, you will find out that uh, you get more and more confidence in the system. So, but, at this moment, I will advise do your general training also. <laughs> not <laughs> just, not <laughs> no, just learn yeah. AI. Huh? It's, it's a change, and it's a change I know when we went from analog film to digital reporting. Yeah. The change I've seen when we went from writing reports to digital spoken report and, and, and uh, speech recognition. So I think this change is, is asking yeah, something from yourself, but if you don't go with the change, you will lose track. Uh, if somebody is still making reports now on, on classic films. No, it's not a radiologist anymore. If he's not making digital reports, it, it stops. So, and, and the change asks something for you. And at the beginning, it asks more than just, just keep on working like you've done before. But at the end, a few years later, the ones who did not change, they, they lose track. And so I think this is something we have to do and we have to go on with it. 
there, there was also a question about cl how clinicians feel about it. Yes, that's a good uh, question. It, it came it, up a lot. Yeah. Um, well, honestly, they um, they are not really aware of it right now. These images are sometimes they are projected in the patient file, but it says uh, still that it's not clinical. Uh, well, it's not uh, clinical. Uh, Data, so it, it's uh, not approved yet in that way that uh, it makes a diagnosis, but they are still in the in the thinking that the AI will replace radiologists. That's how far they are now, and they don't actually know what is going on on this level for the radiologists. Um, they will get introduced to this, and and they will uh, also, you yeah. Know, I think future will show otherwise. If you go back in history, the moment we divided all our images to the hospital, uh, some of my colleagues said, okay, now we're lost. The clinicians are going to see the images before we see them. And then if the clinicians see the images before we see them, we'll, they will not uh, need work together. Right. They will not need a radiologist anymore. We've seen the other way around. We've provided that much images that they came back to us to <laughs> ask what is it. Now again, you see, your attention is attached to one thing in the image and the clinicians see it and often they don't know what they see and they come back to us, is this something or is this nothing? So the more we are used to work with those data and with more information, the more we get interaction and they accept us as, as experts. So in my opinion, it's, it's not the, the end of radiology, it's just the beginning. Agreed, agreed, and, and, uh, and, I, and I like that response. Um, Okay, someone is asking if we organize courses for young residents. Well, <laughs> this could be something we think of in the future. Um, maybe I will, just, I will just do one more question uh, and then we'll wrap up where we've been here for, for some time already with, with both of you. Thank you very much for your time. Um, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, we talked about AI and the, and the workflow. Um, can assist with residents. Ah, you mentioned that AI can assist with residents in training. Do your residents like the solution? Is it easy for them to use? Uh, and do they think it's helpful? You, you touched a bit, a bit this, and I guess that could be our final question. I think they, they find the bits of more often and more often. Uh, so it is helpful. Uh, they get, often they do their first reads because when they are on call, they're sitting next to the scanner, the patient is scanned, uh, there's a hammer that's detected, or maybe not. Uh, they will make the report, and during making the report, the widget will uh, will will uh, give a, uh, a pop up, or the images are uh, coming into the packs, and you will notice this uh, during uh, reporting, and they will do a second look at their images. So it's getting more and more in their workflow. But of course, uh, this takes some time. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think uh, we will we will wrap this up. Any final remarks before I say good night and uh, and thank you? Uh, anything else you want to add? I think well, we've talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for visiting us. No, I, I hope we can see each other again in five or ten years and see who and how radiology, Star Trek yeah, how, how radiology <laughs> uh, will end up. And and yeah, I think at the end. Uh, computers will take over nearly everything at, at, the, at the end of the, the story. It will be being in 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. I don't know if, if you look at the, the, the Star Trek, where the computer and, and the small device is scanning the patient, is providing you all the information and is even uh, treating the patient. So I think the one who is operating and, and using those computers, for me, it's the radiologist. Exactly. He will prevail. Uh, There's it, always the one will, in Star Trek. He will stay and, and, the other, and the other ones, they, they, they will get away. So we will end up with only radiologists in treating patients. And we'll see in 20, 30, 40 years. I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you so much, both of you. I enjoyed it very, very much. And thank you, everyone, for listening to us. Uh, like I said, there will be a recording sent to everyone. And I wish you all a good evening or a good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much.